Hi folks, Pitula here at All Things Agile. As May comes in, it's now time to talk about principle number five, the one that says, build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. This is my favorite Agile principle to talk about. That's the one I'm all about because it just talks about humans, about treating humans as such, as human beings. We do take it for granted now, but going back to the 1990s, you know, factory workers and even the technology workers, they were not necessarily, uh, you know, considered as much in their projects and in the projects they were developing. So like I said, we kind of take it for granted today. So here are three things I would like for you to pay attention to when dissecting this principle. And it's possible that you're not going to find these things happening so much in the so-called agile transformations everywhere. And those things are motivation, support, and trust. Motivated people are engaged in doing their best job. They are eager to try new ideas, you know, to make things work. There is really nothing that is impossible when you have people that really want to take part in projects. And, you know, I actually ask you, have you ever been part of a team where everybody is just excited to get there every day and get things done? And then, you know, every communication, every interaction is meaningful, is exciting. Everybody feels really accountable for the job done, for the results. Maybe you didn't have that at work, but if you tap into your personal life, maybe you had that in a project in your community or even in sports. How does it feel? How did it feel back then working in those types of projects with those types of teams? So do you see the importance of this principle for companies achieving their business outcomes and getting closer and more valuable to their customers? The level of innovation, um, fast uh, speed and adaptability required for those companies, they, they do require that employees do more than just showing up and punch a card every day. Support in environment, they mean access to tools, to people, to anything that can help and not hinder your productivity and your team morale. And it can sometimes be very bad. It can be managers that are never accessible. They never have a time to spend with the team. It can be the team constantly hearing no. It's kind of tiring to be the one on the fight for resources all the time. It diverges that creative energy that should be spent in the project to actually doing things around it, just trying to make it work. We can't expect people to fight for projects and products when they take no pleasure in building them. And there are all sorts of reasons why they're having no pleasure whatsoever. Um, it, we can't also expect them to find this unstoppable energy to keep fighting the uphill battle to find resources. Eventually, people either leave the project or the company. Sometimes it's even worse. They remain in the project, but they, they are now jaded and they work somewhat robotically. Have you seen one of these people either jaded or leaving? Maybe you've been one of those people. I know I have. I have left countless companies after fighting and really feeling no longer supported. Managers in organizations should work really hard to avoid wasting away the motivation of their people. That's so precious and so, so hard to recover. And even if there is enough motivation, the, there is also the environment piece, the resources available to the people, because even if you're very motivated, things will take a lot longer and people will make a lot of mistakes and error if they don't have the environment, the tools, the automations available to them. So that in turn makes the job also more stressful and the end result has a poorer quality. So there you are, you just passed this very long process and scrutiny to join this new organization. Or maybe you're just starting with that long, long awaited project. Yet somehow people don't seem to trust you. And when I say people, I'm talking managers, I'm talking PMO. And it's not like they tell you that or like they are mean on purpose towards you. But they are putting a bunch of controls around you, making your job rather constrained. They want to know how many story points in average 
you do, you make, and they build a bunch of irrelevant calculations around that to decide things on your behalf instead of just talking to you and figuring things out together. You have to report hours in a certain way and you have to produce this report and produce that. There is a lot of telling employees what to do, even and especially when they decide to become agile in agile transformations. And thus, you know, there is a lot of that telling, but there is no inviting people really to think and contribute, which is kind of funny because, you know, people are smart. You know that because you hire them. In those types of organizations, the level of bureaucracy is quite high and they end up being higher than the level of support and access to people and tools that the team would have. Managers end up having more control over their teams, for example, than the teams themselves have over their own tasks. And the telling people what to do kind of comes only top down. There is not really a conversation. That is something that we do recognize as the um, adult child relationship. And quite honestly, it's not something to be expected in, in the, the workplace of today. So basically, these organizations have operated in, you know, a somewhat controlling environment. Maybe you don't want to call it, an, you know, an environment where trust is missing. We can debate that. But the environment have been controlling and it have been like so for maybe decades. That's just how the company operates. And now the executives decided that they're going to go and be agile and they are really interested in collecting all the benefits, but they don't pay attention to the cultural transformation um, piece or they severely underestimate what it takes. And from what I've seen, I believe that unfortunately, sometimes it's because of two things. One, because some people still think that Agile is something you can install, you can deploy, you start putting things into place and you know, there is a certain date, a date when it's going to end, just like a project. And it's not really like that. And two, while I don't want to oversimplify, in some way, shape or form, people still think that doing Agile is meeting up every two weeks, calling it a sprint. In the end, managers don't necessarily know or recognize that not only the effect of this new way of working is huge, not only for their teams, but even for their own style of management. The Agile principle number five is really the one that makes us painfully aware that Agile is all about people and interactions and that you can't transform uh, you know, the ways of working of an organization just in the surface. The work relationship, the synergy among you know, people and teams, all of those types of things, they have to be positively impacted so that you can succeed in adopting Agile. While I'm not suggesting that the employees decide how all the work should be done, what I'm saying is that managers and coaches should really strive to create an environment where adult to adult relationships can be established in the workplace. You know, I trust you, you trust me. And just for the record, let me state right here, right now, that there are actually companies out there, for-profit companies that have flat hierarchies and even managerless life. So just saying that this is not impossible and it's not far-fetched. Now you are smart, so as always, you are probably already thinking, yes, what can the coach do in a scenario like that? Two things right now are accessible to you. And it doesn't matter if you're a coach, if you're a manager, really, it doesn't really matter your position. What I'm going to suggest really has to do with you showing, leading by example. One, don't just tell people what to do. Explain what you see, suggest some better ideas that you might have on, you know, how to better do this or that thing. Explain the benefits, really jump into the conversation and don't take for granted that people will immediately accept whatever your idea is. Two is explain the why. When you tell people the why, they can then decide to join forces with you, fully aware and motivated in their choice. Now, there are a few other ideas that I give you. They are in the blog post down below if you're interested. That's it for today, folks. I wonder if you're as passionate as I am about this principle. Let me know in the comments down below. Why did the principle number five evoke for you? 
That's it for today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!